Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. You know, the Bible taught, tells, uh, told us in the, in the book of Acts that the disciples, every time they got in trouble, every time they got persecuted, every time something went big, they went to their own company. And then they began to pray, and they got in one accord, and they were praying in one accord, and they stayed together. So if we're going to maintain the spirit of faith, we've got to be around people who believe like we believe. Now, it's not saying we have the only truth. We're the only ones who got all the truth. Nobody has all that. But you will, you will lose ground if you come to a certain place. So if you believe that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, according to the word, and you get around people who, who don't believe that, eventually one's going to rub off on the other, and usually the more negative will rub off on people. That's just a kind of a natural human thing. So we want to stay around people of like precious faith. Second, we want to remain teachable. You've got to stay teachable. You can't ever become unteachable. A teachable spirit's is most important in your faith walk. Establish your heart right now that you don't nor ever will know everything. There's not one of us walking around who know everything. We just, we just don't exist. Jesus is the last person that was on the earth who knew everything. As a matter of fact, he's the only person who ever walked on the earth that knew everything. Nobody else ever knew anything, everything. Now, you might run into people who think they know everything, but they don't know everything, okay? Um, keep your heart open because God can use anyone to bring truth and revelation. And we like to refer to Balaam and the donkey. The donkey brought revelation to Balaam. What was that? There's an angel up there going to cut your head off, dude, if you don't stop. You cannot go curse Israel. Um, an unteachable spirit is a sign of pride. And we all know that pride comes before destruction. And in our case, if we get, get lifted up about what we know, it can be, uh, be a destruction to your faith walk. Let's look over at Luke 8. Then we'll go to Hebrews 13 and 2 Timothy 3. Some of y'all remember that because my iPad may die any second. Okay, Luke 8. I'm still trying to figure out why uh, Dropbox didn't update and have it, this and everything. Hallelujah. Luke 8. Jesus admonishing his disciples... Jesus said uh, something, he said two different things. A lot of people think he said the same thing when he said this. He said two different things. In one place, Jesus said, take heed what you hear. And, and in this particular case, he said, take heed how you hear. So how you hear is also as important or just as important as what you hear. In other words, the attitude with which you hear is uh, paramount. And, and equal to the, the, the way you hear is equal to what you hear. In other words, the content and the attitude in which you hear that content are both equal. Okay? So Jesus said here in Luke uh, 8, 18, he said, uh, Take heed, therefore, how you hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that which he seemeth to have. <coughs> In other words, those who are pressing into the things of God, those who are staying teachable, those who are learning from God, will get more. Those who think they know everything and think they got a handle on everything, even what they do have, they'll lose. In other words, they really don't have anything. And they'll, they'll go backwards. I've seen Christians go, back, go backwards just because they thought they knew everything. You know, they had, uh, yeah, I, mean, I had a, I said that, I said this this morning, but I, I had a, um, a roommate in, in, in where I went to Bible school. And he told, he told me and somebody else that he would be teaching at Rainbow Bible Training Center before the year was out. Yep, he was, we were going out there as students, and he would be teaching before we got done. Now, he went backwards. He got into crazy doctrines. He got into false doctrines. He got into stuff that um, you can't prove out with the Bible. Um, he, 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 just, he just made a series of mistakes because the attitude was wrong. He didn't keep his heart right. He didn't remain teachable. You know, the Bible talks about those in, in, in the book of Acts. It talks about the Bereans. We, when they went down to Berea and began to minister in Berea, um, <clears throat> Luke, the writer of, of the Acts, said this. He said, these were more noble than th those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily to see whether they, those things be so. Okay, here we go. See whether those things were so. So yeah, over in Acts 17, 11. So here we have uh, Luke accounting that the Bereans, because they received the word of God properly, Searched it out to prove it out. You're just going to take somebody's word for anything. I don't care what their name is. And I don't care how many letters they have, to their, have after their name. 
Uh, Dad Hagen used to say, he listed some people that had PhD behind the name. He finally figured out after a number of years, that simply meant post hole digger. Because a post hole digger had more sense than some of the stuff they were sharing. Okay? So, <clears throat> we want to remain teachable. We want to take, we want to take heed how we hear um, so that we, we get more, more revelation comes. That we, the things we think we have, we don't lose. We maintain that walk with God. Running over to Hebrews chapter 13. Um, I personally believe Paul wrote Hebrews. Now, I can't prove it. You can't disprove it. There's a lot of argument about it, but you know what? Uh, be like that song. You remember, remember who, wonder who wrote the book of love? We'll be singing who wrote the, who, we wonder, wonder who, who wrote the book of Hebrews <laughs> because we don't really know. Nobody really knows. I think there's more evidence that Paul wrote it than anything else, but we'll just leave that there. All right. But Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for who? You. All right? It's unprofitable for you if, you know, so what I, you know, obey those with the rule over you. Now, we're not talking about discipleship or the shepherding movement. That was some crazy stuff. You don't need my permission to go on vacation. You don't need my permission to buy a house. You don't need some elder's permission to, you know, tell you you can go to the bathroom now. Don't need somebody's permission to, to be able to marry somebody. You know, that's, those are some of the things that the shepherding movement got into that were the excesses of craziness. Yet, on the other hand, the Bible says obey those with the rule over you. What, remain teachable. When they speak into your life, let them speak as the oracles of God. You receive it like a Berean, then go search it out. Prove it out with the word of God. When you can prove it out with the word of God, it becomes real to you, then you're able to go forward. Just because I said it, don't make it so. Isn't that right, Joe? Just because I said it, don't make it so. You know? And I've, I've heard people say stuff, and they, they quote stuff. Now, I grew up, I had a grandmama who used to quote First Opinions 3.7. What was in First Opinions 3.7? The Lord helps those who help themselves. Now, when I first got saved, I thought that was in the Bible. I honestly thought that was in the Bible because I had heard it so much in my life that the Lord helps those who help themselves. And so I had a big old Strong's Concordance. If you all remember, those are about this thick, about this, you know, yay big. And it's got every word in the Bible where it's referred to. Now, the words the, I, uh, if, and, and that kind of stuff, this has a listing. It doesn't actually have partial scriptures. But all the other words have partial scriptures. And so I spent a week one time trying to find the Lord helps those who help themselves because I was going to show somebody where it was in the Bible so I could help them. Guess what after a week I found out? It ain't in the Bible. Now, I'm, I'm thinking, boy, I sure would have liked to have had the uh, PC study Bibles or the, uh, the e-stores now, the electronic Bibles, where I could have put that in there and found out in two seconds it wasn't in there. Uh, but I spent two weeks looking, you know. And then I spent another two weeks looking for the other scripture that's in First Opinions 3.8. And that is that cleanliness is next to godliness. You know, I looked and looked and looked. I knew it was in there. It had to be in there. Why? I heard it quoted. I heard it quoted from the pulpit. Yeah, you know, the, the, the cleanliness help is, is next to godliness. Never found it. Guess what? You still won't find it because it's not in there. So we have to prove the Bible out for ourselves, but we need to be re receptive. If you want to maintain a spirit of faith, we have to have those who speak into our life. Those are our pastors or ministers in our life that oversee us. <clears throat> we have to be open to what they have to say so that we can take a hold of the word of God and grow. So... That's where we obey those with the rule over us, submitting ourselves to them. Amen? Because they they're watching out for you, and they got to give an account. Now, Joe, I know you don't want me getting up to the Lord saying, Lord, Joe has been a pain in my back end for three years. I just want you to know I'm tired of it, you know, and, 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 and I'll be honest with you, he's just caused me nothing but grief. You don't want me doing that, do you? No? Okay. What you really want is something like me going and saying, Lord, Carrie has been a blessing. Every time, I mean, since we put cameras in the building, Carrie is just, I mean, she's in love with the cameras. She just, she's always there. She's always running them. She does a good job. Lord, Carrie's been awesome. I'm giving an account for her soul with joy. Hey, Bill, Brother Bill says amen. We're going to let Carrie start training the other camera operators. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, we've got to remain teachable. We've got to keep the right attitude. So if you're going to keep faith, if you're going to grow in faith, you're going to have the right attitude. Um, be honest with you. I've, I've pastored along, along enough been in the ministry long enough, uh, over, 30, over 30 years, that it, it never ceases to amaze me. I will teach, I'll say these things. I'll say what I'm about to say, and people sit there and go, amen, 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 and then sometime later in life, they're going, who does he think he is? But I have sat right here and preached messages, and you got one person sitting right there going, amen, glory to God, and they're getting all kinds of revelation. Next person sitting next to them getting mad. I don't like that. 
Remember, Jesus said, take heed how you hear. How you hear. Your attitude governs it. One minute, I mean, you're the best. Th pastor is the best thing since peanut butter and sliced bread. Now, kids understand the meaning of that. You know, peanut butter and sliced bread, that's just, that's godly. You know, especially if you've got some Welch's grape jelly to slap on that thing, you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know? So peanut butter and sliced bread. Oh, he pastors awesome. Pastors awesome. Pastors awesome. And then, then you can get to a certain point time in life, they're going, who does he think he is? What, what happens here? This is not taking heed how you hear. You're letting other things enter in. They're entering in and they're challenging what, what you know is right or what you know you should be doing. And they begin to challenge that and you, you become unteachable. I've had people saying, one minute, you, you teach the best things. I mean, I'm telling you, Pastor Ed, nobody teaches it like you do in Greensboro. And the next minute, you know, you're a bum. You're a bozo. I mean, we don't want to hear anything you've got to say. They ain't quite said in those terms, but, you know, that's, that's kind, of, kind of the attitude you get. You know, you don't know anything. You know, one minute you flow in the Holy Ghost. Next minute, you're just full of opinions. What's happened? It's, it's the attitude. Take, Jesus said, take heed, Luke 8, take heed how you hear. Because that's the attitude. See, what you hear is important. It's, equal, it's the equal side. Remember, Jesus said both. He said, take heed what you hear. And then in other places, he said, take heed how you hear. So he, he wasn't saying the same thing. He was not saying the same thing. One is content. The other is attitude. And see, teachability will govern whether you can receive the content. Now, we all know that. We all know that attitude governs whether you can receive content. In other words, if somebody, if you, um, I remember one minister said one time he was, he was, a, he was a, uh, working a, a shipping dock before he was in the ministry. And the, and the scuttlebutt was there was a new uh, uh, foreman coming in. And he was a hard nose. Now, the guy hadn't even been worked yet. They, nobody knew him. But the scuttlebutt was he was a hard nose. And so, uh, first day of work, he's on the deck, on, on the dock, and that guy comes walking in, and he He's a jerk. As a matter of fact, I think he called him a jive turkey. Now, you got to date the era of that we came from. You know, <laughs> you get a jive turkey, that's got to be 60s and 70s, you know. We didn't have jive turkeys in the 80s, all right. But, he, you know, <clears throat> he had a bad attitude towards this guy. What, what happens now? When you got the bad attitude, you will hear a thing they got to say. Now, have you ever watched people try to talk on television, you know, and, and somebody open their mouth, and no matter what they say, they can have, they can have the greatest insight into something in the world but if you don't like them you don't receive a thing they have to say and that's that's where our country is right now we live in, we live in 24 hour uh, cycle news bites uh, and everybody's all about you know what, what their image was or, what, or if they said it and and i've seen people do this they'll say well you know uh, <laughs> what was it somebody said recently um uh, you can't believe believe everything on the internet and i invented it and uh and it says abraham lincoln <laughs> Lincoln didn't invent it, obviously. But, you know, we can get same things where things are going on in the world, and if one person says a statement, it's the gospel truth. If somebody from the opposite political department, uh, party makes that exact same statement, it's not true. Okay? Why? The attitude in which you heard the content. So the attitude in which you heard the content. And in the attitude in which you hear the content of the Word of God. That's why we've got to remain teachable. And when we're sitting in church and we're under pastors and we got ministers speaking into our lives, you, got, you can't let Sister Bucketmouth, who's got a disgruntled attitude about something, and you're always going to have one in the church. Okay? Don't let Bucketmouth use you to become bucket ears, where they just dump all their junk into your ears and into your head. Uh, you know, it happens all the time. And what happens is somebody gets disgruntled about something, they, they, they just going to make sure everybody else hears why they're disgruntled. I grew up in a denominational church, and we had, uh, we had church splits. And I always started with somebody running their mouth, talking stuff, you know, because those churches are a uh, congregational rule. And so, you know, this family and this family are, you know, they, they're the money families, and they got their little followings, and they're going to determine who the pastor's going to be. If they don't like him, they get together and vote him out, have him voted out. You know, another group likes him, so they're trying to keep him there, and, you know, all the stuff going on. And, and uh, we had one church back where I'm from, and uh, there, was a, there was a Trinity uh, church of a certain denomination. And they got to having a fight over the pastor, and they split. And the church split, the group that went off from the church split, left the Trinity Church and went and started the Unity Church. And there was all kinds of ends, in fighting and all kinds. Uh, as a matter of fact, our, our, my denomination, we had, we had a church split when I was a kid. And I'm telling you, all kinds of stuff went on in there. Why? Because the attitude of those people was so rotten. They didn't have the right attitude. 
The denomination finally told them they weren't going to give them a different pastor. They had to keep the one they got. They got tired of them firing them every, every time they turn around. They just finally said, that's who you're getting. We're not sending you another pastor. You've got to keep him. Then had to get rid of him because he was running around with somebody in the church. And, uh, but you get the wrong attitude. You can't become teachable. You're not teachable. I've had, I've had people sit right here in this church service and uh, just sit out there and, and, and get mad about what you're teaching. And you've got right over here on, somewhere else in the church, somebody's getting set free. Revelation's coming to them that's changing their life. I've been in services where somebody's life is radically changed and, they, and it changes them forever. I mean, from that point on in their life, it's completely different because of what was taught. And then somebody else in the church mad and leaves the church over it. Now, how can that be? Well, it can't be me because I'm not saying, I'm saying the same thing. They're both hearing it different. They're hearing it, the attitude. So if you're going to maintain a good, uh, the, the spirit of faith, you're going to have to remain teachable. And let those that, God, that you're sitting under minister into your life and keep the right attitude. As I told the Winston-Salem Church this morning, you're going to disagree or you're not always going to like everything I say. Because I'm going to say stuff sometimes that you don't like. Hello. Well, you know what? Can I say this with kindness? Tough. I'll bet you in the service you don't get to tell the sergeant, I don't like what you're saying. One time. <laughs> Am I right, guys? Yeah, one time, maybe, you know. I mean, my, my, my dad was late. He, he took a hopper from Gitmo back up to Norfolk and was late getting back five hours one time, you know, because they didn't have a flight getting back down there. For something, I forgot what happened. He had come back to North Carolina. He, he had come back to Virginia and come down into North Carolina to visit family. And he, had, he was five hours late. He owned the tarmac down there for five hours with the petty officer in his face, dressing him down. On, uh, down there, and, and get me, it's kind of hot and humid down there. You know, I can't imagine telling him you don't like what you're, I, I'm not going to stand at attention. I don't like what you're saying. I don't like the way you look. That's not going to happen, is it? But we think we can treat, you know, a different, men, the ministers differently. Well, I don't like what you're saying. I'm going to a different church. See, you're not teachable. And you have to stay teachable. Why? Because if you're going to be teachable, you're going to encounter things that challenge you to change your opinion about things, about the Word of God, about different, you know, uh, I, I know of a case I said, I think I said it this morning, but I, I know I said it in Winston. You know, we, we had somebody come to our church one time and come to me to meet with me and tell me up front, we don't believe in spanking. I said, well, I do. Well, we just want you to know we don't believe it. I said, now, when I teach on family, I'm going to teach discipline with spanking. We don't believe in spanking. Well, the Bible says if you, don't, if you spare the rod, you hate your child. Now, I believe the Bible, you know. Now, I don't believe in beating them, and, and I don't believe in abusing but I do believe in that, that God gave a, a place on the body that's, that's perfect for in, 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 uh, discipline. That's the backside. You know, he that spares the, spares the rod hates his child. Why? Um, because you have to train your children. You, you know, you can't, you can't buddy your children. I, 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 I never did buddy my children. Now we're getting to be buddies down. They're older, they're adults. We can, we can pal out and mess around and do stuff. But when they're little guys and, uh, and they don't understand. Now, Jimmy, you're two. And if you put your hand on the stove, you're going to burn it. Well, you don't want them to find out the hard way, do you? You don't want to put their hand on that thing, especially on these, these new ceramic tops where the whole thing is just, you probably pull, pull four layers of skin off on top of the stove if you put it up there. You know, um, you know. No, you tell them no. If they reach for it again, you, they get a little pop. Why? Something's telling them that I shouldn't be doing that. Now, they didn't believe in it. I did. I'm going to teach it. You're, you know, that's, that's, that's just a spanking thing. But there's other things. Um, you know, wives will treat their husbands, you know, to honor their husbands. Men, you're to love your wife. I know, now listen, so you can take that the wrong way. Men, you know, wives submit to your husbands. You got men going around telling their wives they got to do stuff they don't think is, that, that violates their conscience, you know. And no, 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 no. You love them as Christ loves the church. So. But we'll, we'll teach things that you don't like. Everybody encounters that. That's not a reason to get up, you know, and get mad and huffy puffy. You know, why? Because I'm the minister, pastors, my, I'm pastor, other pastors, whatever church you're in. They're, they're going to teach you things and they're going to say things that are going to challenge you to change. Now, you guys, well, you're, you are ex-army, you're in the army. If y'all have to, have to do the gas thing and then close building and break your weapon down and put it back together. You know, huh? Blindfolded, okay. 
Uh, now I think they put you in a room with gas and stuff. You've got to get your gas mask on or whatever in the dark. Put your, wake your weapon down, put it back together, all kinds of, you know, they keep trying to make it different. But here's the thing. You may not like, I don't want to do that. I don't think I need to do that. Yeah, and until you're on the battlefield in the middle of a firefight and your weapon jams. And you've got to break that down and get it back together in 30 seconds to 60 seconds or whatever so that you don't get killed. Now, they make you do it for a reason. They're not doing it just to be mean. They're not putting you in there and shutting the door, making it dark and telling you to break it down, you know, and, and getting get in your face if you don't, telling you whatever they tell you. And I'm sure they can use some things that we probably don't use in church. Uh, but they can you know, get in your face and all this kind of stuff. The reason they do it is because it's going to save your life. And see, pastors and ministers do the same thing. We teach things from the Word of God that's going to save your life. You know, it's going to challenge you to hey, say, see, that's why you got to say teachable. Well, I just thought all we need is love in church. Yeah, you need love, but, you, you know, but love disciplines. Love corrects. Love will chastise. Love will instruct. All those things love will do. And so we have to maintain a teachable spirit as a believer in the kingdom of God so that when the ministers are ministering, uh, we, we keep maintaining our faith. Our faith is maintained. It's strengthened. It's charged. And um, we don't lose that, that, um, that edge. Now, uh, Hebrews 2.1 says, we read this this morning, that we're to, we are to uh, be diligent to keep, to, to keep the things we've learned, lest at any time we should let them slip the word slip there means to carelessly pass. Now, our reserve units are, are probably um, more uh, accustomed to this. You know, they have well, new was what, every two, once a year at least for two weeks. You know, they have weekend stuff, but, you know, that weekend stuff doesn't get, get them enough. I mean, you know, you, you understand, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that's not enough to keep you sharp. It's enough to kind of keep you sharp and not sharp as you need to be. So they, every year they have a one, one session of at least two weeks where they go out and they do maneuvers and they, they stay. They do that. Why? To get them sharp. Get them, make, make sure they stay ready because you forget stuff. You can forget stuff. You just can't. You know, so we don't, we don't want to let stuff slip. I mean, if, if, you're in, if you're in battle, you don't want stuff to slip. I can tell you, I, I, just, I know, you don't want stuff to slip if you're in battle because your life depends on it. Okay, but if you get kind of cocky, ah, I know that, ah, no. you're sitting there talking to, you know, the instructor showing you, um, maybe they've, they've made a modification to your, to your weapon, and uh, you need to know what this modification does, so that, and, and, mess, and, and not mess with it, practice with it, and, and, be, and become accustomed to it, you know, and if, you weren't, if you're not listening, oh, I've already, I know how to use that, and they made an adjustment, and, and you're, you're issued a, a weapon with, that's been adjusted, and you don't listen, it could kill you, or get you killed. Or as worse, get your, get your uh, uh, um, comrades, not comrades, brother comrade, uh, <laughs> your, your, your um, what, do you, what do you call them? Your buddies, your, 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 your troops, your, your, the other troops. What are they, guys? Just, Just what? Your squad. your squad, thank you. You get members of your squad killed because you didn't listen. You were hard-headed. You see, and, and in the kingdom of God, we got to stay, we got to stay teachable and receive and do that in order to maintain our spirit of faith. You might remember which one I was going to next because my, my thing did die. Um, it was in Timothy, I believe. Nobody remembers, do you? That's why I told you. So you would have to remember and not me. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We'll just start in verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, Traitors, heady, heady high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. For of this sort are they which crept into houses and led captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. Listen to this next verse. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So you're not, you get to where you're not teachable, you can learn and not ever get the truth. You can, you could quote scripture. Now, my, um, how many, 
Have you ever been to Jamaica? I haven't been to Jamaica, but I know people who go. Do you know down in Jamaica, the Jamaicans know more scripture than most Christians? They can quote more scripture than, than, than 90% of the Christians walking right now. Now, it don't mean to them what it means to you. Because see, Yah, they all smoke dope and get high because they can get into that spirit. I mean, this, it's part of, the, it's part of you know, being with Yah. You know, they use the, uh, the, the prefix to Yahweh, the Y-A-H, and Yah. And the line, you know, Jesus' line, that's, why they, that's where the dreadlocks come from. They be the lion's mane is, you know, representative of Jesus. So they all have dreadlocks. But they smoke dope to get high. But they can quote scripture. You go to try to witness to them, they can, they can quote more scripture than you can. It's all part of their Rastafarian uh, cult. But they use the Bible. Okay? They've learned, but they, not, they don't have the knowledge of the truth. See, the truth, learning scripture... And having the knowledge of the truth are two different things. You can memorize scripture and not come to the knowledge of the truth. All right? And so he goes on here and, and continues this. And he says this. Now as Janes and Jambres, Jambres withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Now what did Paul, what was uh, Peter, Paul saying to Timothy here? you got to keep your right heart. They, these people resisted the truth. Now, they didn't resist knowledge. There are a lot of people who will um, get a whole lot of knowledge about stuff. You know? I've seen, there, was a, there was a guy who used to be a professor at well, the Oral Roberts a number of years ago. This guy was a Greek scholar. One minister said he, when he heard him when he was younger days before he got off an era, he was one of the best teaching on the blood of Jesus he ever heard. But he got offended about something, got off, and he'd be on television. And that's, I'm not saying anything, whatever. He was on public television doing this. He'd be sitting there with a cigar, cussing, and all this kind of stuff with his little uh, mission out there in California somewhere. And he was teaching some of the squirreliest stuff. He, he, see, he, he began to resist the truth. He had knowledge. He knew Greek. I mean, he, he could, you know, and uh, he had a, 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 a child that is, is, is like a Greek scholar. I mean, they can go through Greek and write it and, and, and interpret it and all this kind of stuff. But he got way off with some stuff. Way off. He got, he got into a place where he was resistant to it. He lost his ability to be taught because he got offended. Okay? If you're going to maintain a spirit of faith and walk by faith, you've got, to, you've got to maintain the teachable heart and the right attitude and take heed how you hear. Jesus said Luke 8, 18. Take heed how you hear. So important. And we, got, and we have to watch that. And, uh, you know, now my son, and he was the one playing the guitar up here. He, uh, when he was in high school, now I'm going to tell you something. We could tell how he was going to do in the class by how he talked about the teacher. If he came home and he didn't like the teacher, it was going to be a rough year. Because we, we did everything. Look, you've got to keep the right attitude about it. Yeah, I don't like him. Yeah, but that's something you have got to be. And he would struggle and struggle and struggle because he didn't like them. He didn't even want to hear what they had to say. Now, he had a teacher he liked. He just breezed through the class. When he had to open his books, he just breezed through the class. All had to do with how he was hearing. He didn't like this teacher. He didn't listen. Matter of fact, he, he, he did not like this particular teacher. But um, he got a phone call one day on his phone. He had left school at lunch. He had, one, he had a seventh period class. And so he had, like, he'd go to lunch. And so lunch, the next class he didn't have. And then he, and he got a phone call from one of his friends at school. And he said, hey, so-and-so. And the next voice was the teacher's voice, a woman's voice, going, Nathan, where are you? I'm fishing. <laughs> he skipped school, gone fishing. She said, you better be back in class before the end of the day. <laughs> and he had to pack up his gear and get back to class. You know, uh, he would do stuff like that. But... He, if he didn't like a teacher, you could forget it. I'm just telling you, you could forget it. When he got to college, if he came home and started talking about he didn't like a certain teacher, we dropped it. We went, drop that time, get you a different class. You're never going to pass that one. He would just, I mean, we, we knew. He was not going to pass that class. Um, he had a couple of religion teachers, and, um, and pretty much out of the gate, we had to drop those classes. And, and one of them was terrible. They were, they were pushing the homosexual agenda, and <clears throat> it was supposed to be the Old Testament class, and they were, they were going to show movies on, on why homosexuality was okay. And he said, well, forget that. We're, we're, you're, you're, going, you're going to fail that one. You're going to be mad. You're going to fail it. So forget it. We got him a teacher this time. He finally got a, a class where it's good. His attitude had everything to do with what he, what he learned. Everything to do with what he learned. And it's true about the Bible. We got, so we, if we remain teachable, 
Say remain teachable. So what's remaining teachable? You keep the right attitude. You got to keep the right, right attitude. And part of that keeping the right attitude is I don't know everything. You know? Because when you think you know everything, nobody can teach you anything. I know people who went to the Bible school I went to when I went. Then when my daughters went to the same Bible school, same thing was happening with students. They thought they knew more than the instructors. So the instructors, now we're talking about people who got 10, 20, 30, some of them 40 and 50 years of ministry experience teaching the kids, and they're out there going, oh, I know, I, and that's not right. I, and they've been saved six months. That's like you going in as, a, as you know, an enlisted, or actually in boot camp, and going and telling the sergeant how to run his, his, his uh, training, because you know everything. Well, we'll, have an officer, we'll probably have an officer and a gentleman moment at that point. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not going, that's not going to go over real good. Now, you don't know everything. As a matter of fact, he's been training people, troops for 25 years. He's seen little, little snot-nosed brats come in there and made men out of them before they got out. All right? And my brother was in the Air Force, and he was in Lackland in um, San Antonio, and uh, he was coming home for Christmas. He had just got out of basic, and uh, he said, he came home and got to the house. He said, I just saw a guy get booted back to day one. Kid was at the uh, bus station, had his had his uh, tie undone, had his jacket, kind of funny, had the hat on the back of his head, had his hands in his pocket, standing there like this, real sloppy. And uh, 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 I guess the Air Force has generals, don't they? Yeah. General came by and said, son, what day are you? He said, sir, I'm finished. He said, no, you're not. You're day one. <laughs> and just sent him back through. <laughs> Apparently, he didn't learn anything. He thought, he, you know, my six weeks at basic, I got it. No, he didn't have it. So we're going to keep the right attitude. Okay, so remain teachable, hang around the right people, be, spend time with the right kind of people, people that are going to sharpen your faith, iron sharpens iron, amen? And then, you know, um, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, we then have in the same spirit of faith, we, uh, as it is written, we believe, therefore have we spoken, uh, uh, or I believe, therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. We stay around the word of God. You stay in and under the influence of the word of God. Don't think you can do without it. You've got to have it. If you're going to grow spiritually, if you're going to maintain spiritually, you're going to have to be under the influence of the Word of God. You're going to have to be around it. You're going to have to be in church. You know, some people say, I don't need church. Yes, you do. You do. Ephesians says he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting. That word in the King James is perfecting. In the Greek, it's maturing. For the maturing or developing of the saints. He gave apostles, he gave prophets, he gave evangelists, he gave pastors and teachers to perfect or mature or develop the saints. You've got to be under that. And you need a pastor. Everybody needs a pastor. Pastors need pastors. I've got a pastor. You know, we, we, need, we need somebody that can look at us and say, you're wrong. And we accept it. You're wrong. You know? Problem is nowadays, by the time you tell somebody they're wrong, they pack up and leave. Out the door. You know? Next pastor call you back. Why did they leave? Well, I told them they were wrong. Well, we can help them. Okay, go ahead. Then they leave over there. Eventually, I, they, you know they don't want to be told they're wrong. Now you've got to be told you're wrong sometime. And that's what you know. The people in your life will. will why? Because you don't know everything. You're going to encounter places where you're wrong. I've had. I've had to change what I preached before. I was teaching something one time that I thought I had insight on. Was sitting in a meeting with a with one of my spiritual mentors, and they said something, and I went. You know, you're exactly right. I've been wrong. I had to come back and tell the church I was wrong. I've been teaching that wrong. Here, because this is what it really said. I, I, just, I didn't see it. Well, that's growing. So you stay teachable. You know, if you, ever, if you ever stake out the claim, I know it all, you're in trouble. So if we're going to maintain the spirit of faith, we've got to stay teachable. We've got to stay around people of like precious faith. And we've got to stay under the influence of the Word of God. Those are our three points for that. Stay under the influence of the Word of God. Stay around people who teach. Read your book, Bible. Read books that... Don't teach you outside of the Bible, but in, reinforce what the Bible says. I, I'm all for books to help you see what the Bible says, but not take you away from the Bible. Well, we don't need the Bible. I read so-and-so's books. I don't read the Bible. Well, you better be reading your Bible, because so-and-so could be wrong. You know, Paul said this, I follow me as I follow the Lord. So we're supposed to follow the Lord. So stay under the influence of the Word, remain teachable, and then stay around people of light, precious faith. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're so glad we're done. We're, we're done. I just want to finish that up tonight. I knew it was going to be shorter tonight than normal, but that's okay. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. 
If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.